Okay, um, I'm going to be presenting on inflammatory airway disease in racehorses, commonly referred to as IAD. So what is IAD? Um, it's the inflammation of the lower airways that results in impaired gas exchange and poor performance. It's the most common chronic airway disease of equine athletes, and it is characterized by a cough, per poor performance, and excess mucus. So what causes this and how is it diagnosed? So the etiology of IAD, or the cause and set of causes. The Purdue University College of Veterinary Medicine and Clinical Sciences actually does a lot of research on this, um, and I've worked with them for the past two years. Um, so it can be caused by exposure to airborne dust and other irritants present in the barn. Um, a big example of this is hay placement. So something that we found through the study is that horses are actually exposed to less dust when their hay is placed on the stall floor rather than when it's in a hay net, which is kind of the opposite of what you would think of. Um, it can also be caused by the inhalation of endotoxins, which are heat-stable toxins associated with the outer membranes of certain gram-negative bacteria. Um, essentially, endotoxins are found everywhere, um, and these can actually be measured by certain assays which is something that I've been working on in the lab. Um, exposure to gaseous ammonia has also been found to cause uh, inflammatory airway disease, but the pathogenesis remains largely unknown and is something that is being looked at to be studied. Um, so the biggest way to, or the best way to diagnose IAD in a horse is to do a bronchoalveolar lavage. So the way that this is done is a saline solution is put through a scope that goes all the way down into the lungs of a horse. So we usually inject about 250 milliliters of saline solution. And then once all of the solution is back into the lungs, it is sucked back out by a vacuum and collected in this bottle. Um, and usually you only get about 50 to 100 milliliters back. But so that's a good excuse. So you left some in and there's no problem with that. Right, it only, um, the 250 is still only about 5% of their lung volume, so it doesn't really affect them and the saline solution gets absorbed really yeah. quickly. So this all has to be done right away. Mm -hmm. um, but that fluid that's recollected can be plated on a microscope sl slide and stained. And then these are counted for their neutrophils, mast cells, and eosinophils. So this is kind of a very far away picture of what the microscope might look like. But then once you zoom in, you can see the various different cells. So then what we do is we would count these cells and see the percentages of each different cell on the slide. So the first one that we're looking at is the eosinophils. Um, these are disease-fighting white blood cells, and they're characterized by the many orange granules, which you can see by this red arrow here. These ones are probably the easiest to spot on a microscope, microscope slide. Um, neutrophils, these are different white blood cells associated with the innate immune system, and they're characterized by this multi-lobe nucleus, which you can see really well on this right there. And the last ones are the mast cells, which are another type of white blood cells that mediate inflammatory responses such as hypersensitivity and allergic reactions. And these are characterized by this large secretory granule, which you can see right here. And these other black arrows on this image are pointing to other mast cells as well. No, I don't see any red blood cells. Do you ever get any red blood cells? Um, sometimes we do, yeah. Okay. But that only usually happens if the horse has uh, is bleeding actively from post-race conditions. Okay which I'll show later. Um, so other diagnosis methods is we can sculpt the um, lungs of the horse and their trachea, and you can observe lower airway obstruction, hyper-responsiveness, which would be an enlarged trachea, which is doing more work, and increased respiratory effort at rest. So this is a, a picture of what we were talking about with how you'd collect red blood cells in your sample, is if the horse is uh, experiencing an exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhage, um, basically, they're under so much stress from racing conditions that their trachea starts to bleed, which you can see. These are pictures from an endoscope of their trachea, um, and they're characterized by A, which is like very mild to little, no bleeding, all the way to F, which can be a very, very severe um, bleeding, and can often sometimes even result to them bleeding out through their nose, which is not good. Um, these are images of tracheal mucus, which we also use in our scores when we're evaluating a horse's post-race conditions. So again, we are looking for like a grade zero where there's no mucus in the trachea, but it can go all the way up to where they have so much uh, mucus that it's pooled into their trachea all the way through, um, which can make it very hard for them to breathe through the race. 
And then lastly, I was going to touch on recurrent airway obstruction, also known as RAO, HEVES, or COPD. Um, and this is very similar to asthma in humans. Um, it's also very similar to IED, it's just more of a... Um, extreme case? Extreme case, yeah, and prolonged case. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So it's characterized, again, by coughing and increased respiratory effort because of the severe airway inflammation, mucus accumulation, and reversible airway obstruction. This also typically occurs in older horses, whereas inflammatory airway disease is typically seen in younger, like two-year-old racehorses. Um, and so this horse, you can see, has RAO, and this is what we call the heave line. Um, it's due to the hypertrophy of the abdominal muscles that obstruct in breathing and enlarge due to excess work being done. Yeah, that's a classic picture right there. And those are my references. Wow. Uh, for the racehorses, what percent have the uh, hemorrhage going on? Like, if you have 100 racehorses after the race, how many would be, even, even if it's not coming out the, the nares, how many would have the hemorrhage, mm -hmm. would you say? I would say from my observations, it would be a very small percent, maybe okay. 5 to 10. It's not that common. Usually if a horse does have that, they don't allow them to race anyways. And we were only observing horses post-race.